In this video, I will show you how to do this 3D Instagram reel by Bart VFX, and this is part three of this series. It's also the last part, so let me know what you want to see next. And just a quick thank you for everyone that's been supporting me. We're at 25,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. When I started this, I couldn't even dream of these numbers. Also now having 100 people in my masterclass and having a exclusive editing community is something I have wanted for a long time. If you want to join the masterclass, link is in the description. And if you want to download the assets that I'm using in this video you can download those in the description too now let's jump into it so we did this part in the last video now we are going to this illustration with a really cool grid some text animation and then it goes back to the video with like a neon swipe then a bit of standard text animation then a ai image with some 3d text and some 3d camera movements and then we'll get a glitch and after that it's done I'm just going to use the A roll that I used before. It's not the same text, but it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to move this out because we don't need this yet. Now I'm going to create a grid first. And I do this by going to layer new solid. It's going to make it black for now. And we're going to add a grid effect to this. Now I'm first going to make the grid a bit more thick. Thick boy. And then basically the color, maybe like dark gray, something like this. I'm going to move the grid a bit closer, something like this. Maybe set the border to 10 and then make it more thin. I like this. I'm happy with this. And now for the pattern, I'm just going to create a new shape. So I'm just going to go into the ellipse tool by holding your mouse down on the rectangle tool. And make sure nothing is selected. Make sure the fill is set to white and solid. So solid color first and change the color to white and the stroke is set to none. And you do this by pressing on the stroke. Now we're just going to make a small circle and we can always adjust this after. Just hold shift because otherwise it's not going to be a nice circle. Something like this maybe. Let's see what this looks like. I think this is still a bit too big. If it's a bit too big, you can always go into the selection tool by pressing V and then holding shift again and then scaling it down a bit. Now we're going to add a repeater on this. So you just go to add repeater and as you can see, it will repeat the circles and we have to do that another time for the vertical axis. Now we do have to adjust a couple of things. First, we go into the first repeater. So we open the transform and I'm just going to change the position. So it basically moves it out a bit and then I'm going to go into the other one. So open the repeater to go to transform. And with this one, I'm going to make sure the first value is set to zero and the second is set to maybe something like 200. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so we now have a basic grid, but of course we want to do something and that is basically make sure that it will fill the whole space. And we do that by changing the offset first and this basically makes sure that it will start a bit more to the left. For example, I can do it like here. So there's a bit more room, minus two, and then we're gonna add more copies to it. And it doesn't have to be much. I think like 14 should do. And for the other repeater, repeater two, we're gonna do the same. But now I'm just gonna see, probably set the offset to minus six or something. Yeah, there we go. And then of course, we're gonna add more copies, maybe 15. Now, this should fill the whole grid. And as you can see, now you have these dotted patterns. Now you can always adjust the size by going into your first shape that you created and changing the size. As you can see, it will change the whole grid and maybe you have to change the values a bit after, but there we go. Now I'm already gonna add some animation to this and that's a turbulent displacement. Turbulent displace. What this will do, it will displace your image. So you can also do this on like a normal image. We've used this effect before. And the cool thing is that you can keyframe the evolution. Uh, you can also adjust the size. It will create this really cool effect, especially if you use it on shapes like this. Or if you increase the size by a lot, it will almost create this like wave pattern. For now, the values that I'm going to use probably amount set to like 50 or something and then the size to 50. And then we're just going to keyframe the amount. Press U to see your keyframes and then just go out a bit and then maybe set the amount to zero. Basically what this will do, it will add a turbulent displacement in the beginning, but we'll basically make sure that all the dots are in a perfect grid again. Now that's cool. I'm happy with this. Now I'm going to add our illustration. Now I have this Adobe Illustrator file with a shape. As you can see, it does still have a background. So what I'm going to do is right click, create, 
create shapes from vector layer. And now we have basically full control over our image. I'm gonna delete the Illustrator file, go into the outlines and then just open the outlines and the contents. And as you can see, you will see a lot of groups. Most of the times the bottom group is the background. In this case, that's the case too. And then we see some other parts that I don't want, as you can see. And those are group two to 11, you can just delete those. And then we have one outline. And that's exactly what I wanted, except one thing that you can probably see is that the color is not right. So let's click on fill and make it white. And then we're just gonna deselect it. And as you can see, we have our image. It's a cool illustration. Of course, not perfectly the same, but I will still show you how to do the transition. Now to reveal this image, I'm just gonna add a stroke effect to this. And it's quite a known effect where you can reveal stuff. And there are other ways, there's also plugins for this, but for now, I'm just gonna use this. Just go into the pen tool, make sure that the mask is selected so tool creates mask is selected and then i'm just going to do a rough outline over it if you want to you can perfectly go over your image i'm not going to do that i'm going to do it quite roughly because this is happening so quick you don't have to do it perfect just make sure that everything is as covered as much as possible and of course if you do a slow animation with the stroke effect you do have to be careful because then you're gonna see this but what i'm just gonna do is make sure that this mask is selected in the stroke effect then i'm gonna set it to on transparent for now and i'm gonna disable the toggle mask and shape path visibility so you can see what's happening as you can see we have this beautiful drawn image that i did i'm just gonna increase the brush size so it basically will cover the illustration now for this you do have to turn it back to on original image and what is also really nice is to change the color to something else so for example like a bluish or dark bluish and then also changing the opacity to something else so you know basically if it's covering it or not as you can see it's almost covering it i can also now adjust my mask accordingly or i can just really increase the brush size and like i said with like a slow animation you don't want to do this because you want to have it as perfect as possible in in this case this is actually perfect because now what we can do is animate the end and as you can see it will basically fill in the image and if this happens really quick you won't even see our uh, small minor mistakes so i'm just going to animate this for example set a keyframe go a couple frames further and then setting it to 100 percent and then change the paint style to reveal original image now we can even add a force motion blur to this and this will add motion blur to our effect this will make it a bit more smooth and now we can go into you to see our keyframes right click keyframe assistant easy ease now if we play this i'm just going to change my quality to quarter so it will go a bit quicker as you can see it will reveal the image in a really cool way uh, and if you don't like it you can also adjust the mask adjust the keyframes a bit so it goes a bit quicker maybe but this is exactly the effect that we want now i'm gonna create a rectangle and i'm gonna fill it with a radial gradient and you can click on the fill and change the color it's gonna set it to maybe like a reddish to maybe like red but then dark red something like that can always adjust this later and then i'm just gonna drag this to create a shape of course we're gonna align it in the center and i'm gonna move it up a bit and i really don't like the gradient because it needs to be set like this something like this and gradients really add some depth to shapes this is perfect now for the text i can just click the text tool and type something here so text here of course center it and of course also we want it in italic meaning that the font is basically like slanted a bit now some fonts don't have that this one doesn't you can always go into the text and animate the skew and if you then set it to for example 10 or something it will make it italic now for the text animation i'm going to use animation composer it's a free plugin normally i don't like using plugins but for this it's so much easier uh, we can just go into animation composer and especially because it's free i don't mind using it and we can go into the starter preset transition text layer you don't have to use it you can also use the standard after effects animation presets but there is one that i think is really similar or maybe even the same and it's scale characters and then from start i'm just going to animate the in and as you can see it will basically animate the text i'm gonna move it over so the timing is a bit better maybe make it a bit quicker also something like this and now we're gonna make our 3d animation so i'm just gonna make sure that everything is 3d and i'm gonna add a new camera i'm gonna set it to 50 millimeter and one note press ok 
move this up and I'm just gonna set a position, drag this keyframe out, and I'm gonna add some depth to this composition. I'm just gonna link the text to the shape uh, because they're gonna be on the same plane anyway. So we press P for position, move this more to the front, and maybe scale it down a bit, something like this. And let's see if there's enough movement in this. Yeah, I like that. And then for the outlines, I'm gonna press P for position and also move it more to the front. Let's just set maybe minus 800 and then scale it back down to something like this. Maybe move it back down. Now I'm gonna zoom the camera in by a lot by holding shift and changing this value. And then I'm gonna also add some rotation to this, Z rotation. So move this keyframe out and maybe something like four then press U to see your keyframes and let's reposition this a bit. This is the correct movement, but as you can see, it's really not smooth. It ends really harsh. So we're gonna change it with the curve editor. So just right click keyframe assistant, easy ease or press F9 and go into the graph editor. Now, what I'm probably gonna do is drag this out. I'm just gonna see if this works, make this a bit more quick. Yes, I really like this way more smooth. Maybe we're gonna drag it out even a bit more. And I'm also gonna ease ease the rotation and I'm also gonna drag that out a bit. And now of course we're gonna add motion blur to all of our layers except the grid layer. And as you can see, the grid is also intersecting with the uh, dots and that's because they're at the same position. And sometimes you just have to move the grid a bit back like it doesn't have to be much just so there's some depth to it. Otherwise After Effects doesn't know what layer or which layer is in front. And then we have our first scene. Now we can do multiple things. We can or pre-compose this or we can pre-compose everything. Now, since we're just gonna use a light transition to go back to our A-roll, we can also just press Command Shift C or Control Shift C on Windows and pre-compose everything called scene one. And there we go. Now I have this cool neon transition. I'm just gonna put this over our layer and then cut it off by hitting Alt bracket. So it goes back to our main video. Now, of course we need some text animations, but we can use the same text preset. I can actually go to the scene one and copy this text over, going into our main composition, pasting it. It doesn't even have to be 3D. Just press S for scale to scale it up, move it, and make sure it will start animating right here by moving the layer. Now, what I do want to do is basically create some zooms and we do this by going to layer new null object and then make sure that the text and the A roll is connected to the null. We can even call this zoomer, not to confuse with boomer. Press S for scale and then set the keyframe and move this out. And then for example, zoom it in a bit. Now, of course, select all of our keyframes, hit F9 or right click easy ease. And as you can see, there's some movement in it. Now let's go to the AI image part. For this, I'm gonna import a AI image that are already separated. Just make sure it's set to composition, retain layer sizes, and create composition is set to on. And open it, then press okay. And then we have this composition with two layers. One is the front and one is the back. And as you can see, I didn't do it perfect. And as you can see, I didn't do it perfect. The hand is a bit weird, but it should work. And if you don't know how to separate this, watch some of my other tutorials. I have quite a few of them where I show this. And we can or work in this composition, or I can select these layers and just paste them by pressing Command C, Command V, Control C, Control V on Windows. And let's move this over a bit. So it starts here. Then of course, make them 3D. I'm gonna change the background to be set around here, press S to scale it up a bit. So there's a bit of room to play with. And now for the front layer, I'm also gonna make it 3D. I'm gonna add a new camera, layer new camera, press okay. And I'm just gonna make sure that there's some depth to it. Again, just move it more to the front, not too much, maybe something like minus 400. Press S for scale to scale it a bit back down. It's cool, something like this. Move the image down like that, there we go. Now press P for position on the camera and I'm just gonna set a keyframe. I'm gonna move this out a bit and let's see if we can really zoom it in to something like this, on this basically on the screen, something like that. Of course, easy ease the keyframes. You can do this by right clicking and then keyframe assistant, easy ease. And let's just play this first. That's cool, but not exactly what we want. We also want some rotation to this. So press R for rotation. Maybe I'm also gonna rotate the Y axis and the Z axis. So let's select these, drag these out and let's see. Let's maybe drag it, hold control on Windows or command on Mac and then maybe moving the Y rotation too, something like this. I might also add some more depth to this later on. So 
right click easy ease that's already better now let's go into the position select it go into the curve editor or graph editor and let's move this a bit and let's move this a bit so it's a bit more quick at the beginning there we go i think this is really cool maybe i'm gonna drag this out a bit press u to see our keyframes and drag these out a bit too this is really cool i really like this of course enable motion blur and there we go we have a really cool animation and to add the text we can literally just use the standard typewriter effect so text here of course make it 3d and it's already positioned perfectly now we can just go to effects and presets typewriter press u to see our keyframes let's change these a bit something like this make it a bit more quick something like this now press p for position make sure it's a bit more to the front we can even move it even more to the front so there's at least a bit more depth between the text and the computer that'll do now i'm gonna zoom it in a bit more something like this because we're gonna have an extra zoom after this basically a bit later but like zoom out even more so i'm just gonna zoom it out now making sure that the layers are still in frame something like this and as you can see it will basically zoom out and then zoom out even more that's what we want now i do want to add a new adjustment layer so layer new adjustment layer and put the text below this and adjustment layer also below this and i'm going to add a gaussian blur to this basically what this will do is will blur the image i'm just going to keyframe it you can also use the focus with the camera but in my opinion sometimes it can be a bit hard to use so i'm just gonna use this set it to maybe 25 let's play this so as you can see it will defocus like a camera maybe even a bit earlier we can even ease ease this and now we need our text animation again i'm just gonna duplicate the text that we had earlier you can do that by pressing ctrl d or command d on windows and then we can just move this up of course make it 3d make sure it's above the adjustment layer so it's still clear and then just press p and i just need to move it more to the front i'm just gonna see what my front layer is around minus 400 so then this can be around minus 600 then maybe move it a bit like this then change the timing by moving the layer that's really cool maybe i'm also gonna change the rotation to keep on going a bit going to the graph editor changing these keyframes a bit there we go and then it zooms out shows the text now for the line around it it's really easy guys you can just go into the pen tool and make sure that the fill is set to none set the stroke to a color that you want for example red okay maybe set it to five pixels we can always adjust this later on i'm just gonna draw basically just click and drag so we'll have this handle and then just do that again around here do that again around here do that again around here and make sure that you don't close it off but maybe something like this you can always adjust this a bit later by for example hovering over the points that you created and then you can just move it around a bit same with this one now of course make it 3d and i'm just going to copy the position value Control c on windows or command c on mac and of course Control v on the shape now it's at the same position i need to just move it over a bit maybe scale it down a bit maybe increasing the stroke also Let's see something like this there we go now i'm gonna increase the stroke to maybe 15 so we can really see it there we go and now one thing we need to do is open the shape open the contents and open the shape go into the stroke and here we have the taper and i'm just gonna increase the end length and increase the start length by a bit and basically what this will do is make this really like draw effect as you can see it will start small and then become like thick and then basically end small again you can also adjust this a bit you can even set this to really high like 100 percent you can play with this a bit now for the animation i'm gonna use a standard trim paths so going to add and then trim paths open it open it and then we can just animate the end so you can set a keyframe i'm now just gonna press u to only show the keyframes and i'm gonna drag this out a bit maybe when the text is almost there maybe start it around here so set a keyframe then go a bit further and set it to 100 percent now of course enable motion blur on that and of course like always also easy ease the keyframes now if we play this we have this really smooth animation with the text and the circle around it now of course you want to know how to do the glitch transition and the easiest way is to just select all the layers then alt and then right bracket on most keyboards that's next to the enter key then i go to window animation composer i go into pre-comps 
transitions digital glitch and then i'm just going to use a short digital glitch make sure that this cut is aligned well i'm going to move this layer a bit like this and this will add a glitch to it as you can see and we have our glitch transition and then you get something like this i just added a overlay and a glow and it's a really cool effect do let me know what you want to see next in the comments down below link to my masterclass is in the description don't forget to subscribe and then i'll see you next time bye